welcome friends once again to the NPTEL module on strategic trade and protectionism theories and empirics. We are at the very last lecture of this particular course where we have been uh, you know trying our best to uh, give a complete summary of strategic trade and protectionism over last all you know 39 lectures. Uh, so, without uh, delaying further, let me uh, quickly uh, start with uh, the complete you know discussion we made uh, as part of our concluding session. So, let us start with here. Uh, so, in the very beginning of the lecture in the week number 1, we started with discussing various uh, latest evidences of uh, of, of uh, you know international trade particularly highlighting the strategic issues uh, across the member countries. So, thereby you know member countries uh, used to take number of protectionism measures which may not be actually right or may be right depending upon the context we have been discussing. So, whether right or left uh, it is very trivial to understand. So, therefore, uh, we are supposed to look at uh, the exact theories and certain empirical evidences to it. So, in short what we have looked at why theories or why facts uh, as an anecdote to the understanding of uh, you know in strategic trade. So, we largely uh, try uh, tried our best from the theories in in some of the you know lectures on, on uh, small country versus large country discussion especially for strategic partnership or related to protectionism. Then uh, we also move to the understanding of very you know important aspect called intra-industry versus inter-industry uh, inter -industry trade which is in connection with uh, you know <coughs> connection with uh, the present days uh, nitty gritty of trade uh, where uh, many products are slightly differentiated. So, therefore, uh, you know we are living in a monopolistically competitive market. So, which has raised to the possibility of intra versus inter industry trade and largely we discussed it. Similarly, uh, we discussed as part of protectionism policy, we discussed uh, various forms of uh, protections including nominal and effective rates. So, we will dis uh, we have already uh, made la uh, you know, the exact discussion, I will unfold the exact week when we discuss those. Then we also talked about tariff versus non tariff measures. Then we discussed in the very uh, latest uh, you know week uh, on trade trade blocks versus trade blocks as part of our uh, you know last week session, and uh, within that session also we emphasized trade creation versus trade diversion, and the, the another theory by Professor Jagdish Bhagwati uh, on emerging rising growth rate, which is part of a strategy. Uh, for uh, for the developing countries to grow uh, for, for for protecting their terms of trade also been discussed. So, uh, so let us start with uh, the first and two lectures for first and second lectures are uh, primarily on understanding facts and figures uh, or the recent evidences certain cases third lecture onwards we emphasize quite holistically on 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 uh, the you know international trade and its figures. We talked about uh, current account deficit as percent of GDP. Uh, so, crude oil prices and its implications for uh, develop and developing countries. We also emphasize top 10 and bottom 10 exports and import destination countries, their composition of exports and imports. In addition to that, we, we uh, ex emphasize different types of uh, top 10 you know, commodities and services. Then. <coughs> We also explained uh, uh, the top economies and with the comparison with India, top remissions countries and FDI in, in, in portfolio investment, forex reserves, those discussion already made in lecture number 3. Now, especially in lecture number three, uh, three, 4, we uh, try to identify from the beginning of the week on uh, what are the facts on trade policies or facilitations uh, in different countries. We unfold the discussion of uh, the East Asian crisis to East Asian miracle of the uh, particularly the 10 years journey and uh, the miracle how those countries actually uh, change the paradigm and uh, you know why facilitation is largely required. Uh, some of the theories are discussed in the next oh, 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 already been discussed in some of the you know lectures. 
So, we discuss how those miracles are also uh, having you know attached with number of possibility of bust. So, most problematic factors importing India also we emphasized. We uh, talked about Asian uh, you know uh, and OECD and its comparison to India especially uh, related to import restrictions. There are various restriction indicator we mentioned. So, we all also you know, uh, you know collected the information on India's trade policy especially the latest foreign trade policy FTP 2015 that is the latest document you can uh, get it from the uh, you know, sources I mentioned during that week lecture number 4 of week number 1. Then uh, we emphasize what are the documents required to export, what are the documents required to imports, what are the processing export orders, trade related in uh, trade agreements or RTAs in force in accession and negotiation are also discussed. Uh, in lecture number 5, uh, we started emphasizing on the pure theory, trade theories, I mean why trade theories are required. So, in uh, trade theories we emphasize basically on fallacies of international trade, there are also fallacies you know we have certain myths and beliefs. We uh, emphasize recent theories and factors relating to trade based on the theory. Uh, so, evidences also were there uh, to prove the theory whether the proof theories are actually correct or not. So, uh, when we checked with the rationality of the data, then what are the social and political questions to the theory. Uh, we also answered is free trade always uh, the, the case and is it uh, good is trade good through the theories. So, so some of the you know fallacies you can follow uh, I mean all the fallacies can be followed from the concern lecture. In week number 2 onwards we emphasized uh, the exact theory the, 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 the founding uh, you know uh, theoretical or the theoretical base of classical theory. Uh, is, is, is not none other than mercantilism. So, we discussed that mercantilism largely large believe on uh, you know exports not import I mean not imports. So, we will check their historical you know background then when uh, during what time also the decline of feudalism that led to the change of uh, mercantilism then also the break of mercantilism was largely due to the change in technology. Then we emphasize the main points of mercantilism like you know they believe, believe in bullionism, colon, colonies and their role in mercantilism, then the seas and they restrict the seas uh, routes to the end and they also uh, talked about population and their changes. So, there are uh, the, the thinkers called physiocrats uh, during that period, the criticism of physiocrats are also emphasized. Then two ways uh, also we discussed two ways to increase nation's wealth, triangular trade between the you know different countries or emphasize how you know triangular form actually was uh, one of the most important aspects of uh, you know mercantilism. Then also we talked uh, you know discussed some early writers then mercantilism uh, mercantilist thinker like physiocrats. Uh, so, Thomas Mohn okay like economists were emphasized. From lecture 7 onwards we arrived into the uh, the core classical theory by uh, you know the father of nation called Adam Smith. So, as, as from the picture we also gave the same picture during that lecture where we discussed that uh, it is the invisible hand which is you know responsible for correcting the market. So, therefore, we, we need not you know worry. So, this is a theory from 1723 to 23 to 1719. So, they attacked uh, Adam Smith theory attacked on the mercantilism on, on various grounds we can follow it from the lecture number 7. So, then they strongly believe in uh, laissez faire basically on uh, what is the basis for trade, what are the gains from trade and how uh, uh, I mean how the trade takes place basically what is the pattern patterns of trade. So, based largely Adam Smith theory is based on uh, absolute cost advantage. We also gave this example to verify between the US and India and here we are mentioning labor productivity and accordingly you can check the answer for it. Sim uh, in lect uh, lecture number 8 as part of the week number 2 we emphasized comparative cost advantage by David Ricardo. So, we, we uh, talked about opportunity cost in detail also emphasized production possibility frontier 
so we derived the diagram and placed uh, the, the differences. From the example, you can verify uh, the range of trade once again from the lecture I have categorically mentioned. There will be you know some questions expected also uh, in your exam those who are willing to appear for the exam and uh, you know there will be no question of committing errors. Now, regarding the discussion of specialization complete versus incomplete specialization again I, I discussed that this is the theory uh, based on complete specialization and based on their assumptions. Later on we also talked about uh, revealed comparative advantage, it is not just comparative advantage by on its own as compared to the world for a particular product it is exposed to the world exports divided by the total exports of that country we divided by total exports of, of the world we discussed already. So, basically this is the ratio of exports and this is the ratio of exports of the particular product. So, we also cited the number of examples for, uh, for the revealed uh, comparative advantage between India and China where we said that uh, we need not worry you know China India has a large number of revealed comparative advantage. And uh, we also cited one case uh, published in the recent uh, paper, uh, you know, 2019 uh, newspaper in Financial Express on India must, given India must focus on areas it is compared to advantage rather than fear of rise of China. So, uh, at last we talked about RCA uh, based index, uh, you can also follow from WALS WITS database to you know check the differences in different indicators those who wish to do certain survey on it. Now, we as I just said in the financial express newspaper, uh, so uh, now this is India's context in everywhere in all segment fuel, agriculture of you know ores, metals uh, except manufacturing rest cases India has you know advantage in uh, revealed comparative index approach as compared to China. So, therefore, India ha, you know has huge potentialities for its growth and uh, these are the di you know figures given from 1992 uh, 2014. And on lecture number 9 we discussed uh, static to dynamic you know comparative advantage theory where we largely attach number of new classical comparative advantage theory and their assumptions. Uh, the static uh, demand and supply diagram to explain it also it has you know <coughs> various changes in the static part with the change in the assumptions. Now, on the follow of lectures like lecture number 10 <coughs> there are certain you know empirical testings of complete advantage made uh, especially uh, we analyze the catching up economies model with the ASEAN countries there were uh, one example uh, taken from one of the paper which which captured domestic trade balance and uh, international competitiveness and also on products mapping we will explain shortly this is the equation we discussed uh, just before uh, revealed uh, you know compared to advantage. And there are another uh, approach given by revealed systematic comparative advantage we already discussed by you know uh, Dalum et al in 1998 and Larson 1998 paper. Now, this is the equation you just go and follow it's because of uh, positive time and we are concluding the discussion. So, therefore, I am not emphasizing. And last one to be emphasized by uh, to understand that uh, comparative advantage trade balance index was also suggested by Lefe 1992. We also discussed that with this equation and you can also check their extreme point the range of each of uh, the points can also be checked from the lecture number 18. Now, after that uh, we try to uh, you know refer an article published in a, uh, in, in a journal uh, called the geese flying product mapping model where we discussed TBI index as I just said RSAI and accordingly we divided 4 parts. These are the 4 parts we discussed and please refer to lecture number uh, you know accordingly. Now, uh, in the context of uh, new classical trade theory and standard trade model we uh, you know started discussing in week number third where we talked about community independence curve and from this onwards we said that specialization is incomplete because of the realistic assumptions taken and all uh, each country are not just com producing entire production of the same variety and since the principle is based on increasing cost function. And uh, so, <coughs> uh, in the lecture number 12 we discuss about uh, Hexter-Rowling theory of trade 
we have we have emphasized abundance versus intensity you can follow it from the equation abundance by physical and relative factors then stall per samuelson theory through hos theory especially uh, her return uh, returns to uh, you know scarce factor were emphasized how trade actually facilitates scarce factor we also discuss uh, factor intensity reversal uh, emphasized by professor minhans indian economist which is quite uh, you know criticizing the hos model and uh, we, we discussed the income distribution approach uh, by citing various theories called uh, you know uh, HOS theory, Hector Olin Samuelson theory. Then we discussed uh, you, know, uh, you know factors if a factor fixed by Haberler and Keynes uh, approach, Ricardo and Weiner approach related to some factors fixed depend uh, on, 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 on due to short period and long period. So, you just go and check how those short period and long period relevance of HOS theory are important. So, I have already just said we emphasize the te empirical testing of HO theory, uh, we talked about Leonti paradox, we talked about a uh, factor intensity reversal, we also emphasize through transportation cost and their distribution. Extension of HO theory in, uh, was emphasized in lecture number 15, where we uh, discussed product cycle model, intra from trade dynamic technological differences through you know technological gap model emphasized in Posner 1961 and product cycle model by Werner in 1966. So, similarly we also emphasize you know outsourcing and intra industry trade. On lecture number uh, 16 week number 4 we, we, we talked about uh, types of economy of scale then competition and monopoly monopolistically competitive market where we emphasize you know inter, inter industry versus intra industry trade you can go and refer accordingly. And monopolistic competition and trade was emphasized in lecture number uh, th 17, especially with the extension of uh, uh, you know Krugman model. Uh, we we uh, we uh, talked at large, where we derived in lecture number 18 for intra-industry versus inter-industry trade, where we differentiated horizontal versus vertical inter-industry trade, emphasized by. <coughs> by Bakshi in his paper and uh, it is famously called GHM approach uh, tested at HS 6 digit level. So, they also emphasize uh, you know uh, HVIT and LVIT stands for high vertical and low vertical uh, verti uh, you, know, um, you know vertical intra industry trade. So, you uh, and there are number of cases given uh, as compared to IIT and uh, intra industry trade and rest of the world cases. So, we measured uh, intra industry trade by different approach by global and Lloyd uh, approach, then uh, BG approach, uh, you know, uh, box trend approach, then we uh, talked about global and Lloyd uh, on co uh, co corrected approach and also corrected approach. You go and follow the respective lecture, you find out the answer for it. Now, lecture number 21, week number 5, we started discussing about partial equilibrium analysis of trade where uh, we, we, uh, we emphasize the simple demand framework and from there we also derive a general equilibrium analysis by using offer curve and uh, from where we dis discussed uh, the terms of trade at large. So, offer curve in trade analysis was also emphasized separately in, in lecture number 22, where we discussed Marshall and Edgeworth uh, box diagram. We discussed uh, the, the you know uh, of uh, how to derive reciprocal demand curve uh, as mentioned by J. S. Mill and uh, in lecture number 23rd we referred oil stocks and its impact on terms of trade. We referred to small country context, we uh, talked about general equilibrium context. Uh, immersion rising growth rate was emphasized in this lecture and also we refer the data the figures of last 10 years on it. And how to measure terms of trade? Uh, there are various instruments uh, developed by Jacob Weiner and Mayer uh, and uh, also determinants are emphasized, but there are different approach mentioned by Mayer and with certain uh, you know, composition made by uh, the professor. And in lecture number 25, uh, we, we talked about purely on determinants and its impact on trade. On lecture number 26, we uh, talked about uh, just a minute, we, uh, we talked about trade protection from week number 6 onwards, trade protectionism were discussed at large. Why protectionism? What are the different types of protectionism? Arguments in favor, arguments in against, uh, and certain cases were given uh, with the US and China trade uh, you know, war. And these are the you know maps we discuss at large. Uh, you can go and follow accordingly uh, from the respective uh, session. 
lecture number 27 particularly on emphasizing types of protections and uh, on the types we uh, uh, compared ad valorem specific in com uh, compound, import quota, economy effects of quota were also discussed, VR voluntary export restraint, then uh, product subsidies, embargoes, foreign exchange control as we mentioned that you know uh, tariff is not always successful. There are many evidences of non-tariff barriers uh, 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 raised among the member countries because tariff is retaliatory and uh, you know actually retaliated by another uh, member country. On week number 28, we discuss welfare effects of tariff on consumers, producers, uh, revenue. Uh, so, therefore, we discuss partial equilibrium analysis of tariff. Then uh, we discuss about other potential cost of tariff, W2 and its relevance of tariff and which rounds or which negotiations tariffs are discussed in which level. Then Indian tariffs are actually emphasized with different time periods with the latest figures. So, uh, Another lecture on 29 specially, we compare uh, the nominal versus uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know effective rate of protection and uh, with valuated approach uh, as well as uh, you know uh, the valuated approach was mainly used. So, the, the theory of tariff structure was emphasized. Uh, the rate of effective protection are measured by this equation as we already mentioned, you go and check. Uh, we compare after uh, looking at this, we compare a small country versus large country context. You also uh, refer the context for Stolper and Samuelson theory on distribution of income. Uh, we checked with uh, optimum tariff uh, uh, in order to understand the effective tariff uh, discussions. Uh, now, we also have uh, uh, in lecture number 30 on uh, e effective protections, latest facts and figures especially on Indian tariff, WTO and tariff rates, then US and China tariff, why the tariff trade was is taking place recently between these two countries. Then we try to map the you know ex extent of restriction of import and export by region, by sector, by tariff acceleration uh, by referring Young Tar database. Then uh, we check the world map. Uh, with their effective rate of protection with different examples. Here uh, the one sort uh, one just sample of it which we have discussed at large in different sections. So, now look at very restrictive areas are here and uh, India and some parts of Africa. So, these are the top most uh, restrictive import restrictive countries as per the ONCTAD report 2017. Now, on week number 7, uh, we unfolded the discussion for non-tariff measures specially highlighting the number of uh, non-tariff uh, barriers those were in force or in practice. Also uh, we, we, we understood MFN most favored nation tariff of different uh, groups or different regions and protectionism in international trade has been on the rise is one of the uh, you know, conclusion of our understanding. High income countries increasingly use non-tariff barriers as compared to tariff measures subsidies <coughs> and state aid measures are increasingly applied as well, but it is not among the highest, but the other indicators are highest. And non-tariff barriers are significantly, uh, I mean non-tariff barriers uh, uh, significantly reduces, uh, barriers significantly reduce trade uh, as emphasized in different article we referred during the uh, you know week uh, and its you know discussion. Similarly, share of non-tariff barriers, tariff and trade defense measures were made and discussed uh, I mean uh, of India as compared to others. Type of non-tariff uh, barriers and protectionist policies were also emphasized. Number of non-tariff barriers those who are uh, above 400 to 800 or, or, or uh, with a range of 400 to 800. It is US we have repeatedly said, US has more than 800 you know non-tariff barrier cases as against India it is around 400, 398 cases uh, till 20 uh, and from, from the duration 2009 to 2017 and uh, other parts of country are, are, are in this range, but uh, these are the most important uh, restrictive countries so far as non-tariff barriers uh, concerned and these are the reports collected from global trade alert database. Then uh, as part of the discussion on uh, you know non-tariff barriers, uh, as I said uh, these are the way we discussed quota, subsidies, voluntary export restraint, dumping, 
then uh, we we discussed uh, their you know implications to the society uh, then uh, <coughs> on the very last week discuss about trade creation versus trade diversion so and also the theory of second best i am just coming to the discussion of theory of second best in a in, in a short while so ultimately we are emphasizing on the economic welfare of different countries so uh, on lecture number 32 uh, largely we talked about uh, uh, talked about uh, types of non tariff barriers different types though it was there in the chart now uh, there are certain trade defense measures uh, you know anti you know circumvention anti dumping uh, subsidy then safeguard uh, then in non tariff barriers majorly we discussed these import controls uh, subsidy state aid and subsidies procurement policy localization capital control export control uh, so <coughs> and most importantly is 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 not sps and tbts those we have separate sections also now this is the map where we discuss very restrictive views in which part of the country again india U us so far as those measures are concerned non tariff measures are concerned now uh, another uh, map which captures uh, non tariff measures and their re uh, relative intensity across countries the intensity is very high when measures are taken intensity is very high in china and some parts of european countries okay so we you go to the respective section and and, and verify accordingly on lecture number 33 we checked the import quota uh, we said that higher domestic it has you know impact in terms of higher domestic price the, as compared to tariff and import quota is higher domestic production than tariff whereas tariff is higher consumption impact than quota and higher imports than quota. So, some of the comparison we made it on lecture number 34 particularly one of the latest aspects of trade restriction or protectionism is none other than technical barriers to trade. We discuss it uh, why what are technical barriers, how is it different than SPS, we discuss about the provisions of non-discriminatory norms of WTO and transparency patterns of WTO, we also emphasize different TBT committees and who are the members, who sits, what kind of issues are taken off. We also uh, at large emphasize the developing countries context and what kind of assistance are provided by the secretariat on in this context are emphasized. Now, this is very important figure because it is a very latest where 25,000 TBT <coughs> notification are made to WTO out of which 300 473 specific trade concern STCs are raised out of that only 6 disputes are actually discussed on WTO you know negotiations. We will discuss how as per the uh, October 2015 data. Now, this is the one how processes are there uh, regulatory processes by which any decisions are taken. Now, periods are given you go to that uh, and then check how you know it takes time. Uh, this is a pro uh, report taken from WTO on TBT. Similarly, SPS also is checked all those questions, the figures were collected for to 2017, estimates of SPSs are made, then India's implications on uh, these SPS measures, issues related to transparency, a special case was solved, we have given this case study on cinnamon exports from Chai, uh, Sri Lanka as a case discussed. Uh, where uh, you know we emphasize how uh, the SPS committees could able to actually solve the problems for, uh, for Sri Lanka's exports of cinnamon to European countries. Uh, so, on the week number 8 at the last uh, week we discussed most importantly on economic integration finally after uh, understanding you know restrictions initially we discussed theories then some restrictions uh, pro some protection tariff and non tariff then we unfolded the discussion of integration how member countries are actually integrating joining hands together to develop strategies and accordingly they protect themselves so we discuss uh, the history of uh, use of uh, the the uh, you know uh, integration we discuss blocks as compared to block this is restriction this is actually group groupism or uh, developing groups they are success and failure aspects and types of trade blocks especially we discuss preferential trading agreement free trade area customs union 
common market economic union we cited different uh, countries example especially Marco survey ex cited we exam cited ASEAN we cited uh, European Union we cited SAFTA we cited NAFTA there are various way by which you can differentiate you can refer to lecture number 36 for further this clarity. Now, as per the discussion in the WTO, uh, there are certain principles by which uh, these are made. One is called uh, without discrimination principle MFN status, and what are the exceptions to those MFN are, are actually uh, taken up in the succeeding lecture. Now, on lecture number 37, we discussed the theory of customs union, where we emphasize the static effects of integration. We emphasize very clearly on trade creation versus trade diversion some members are creating trade whereas while creating there are some you know cost issue also with the earlier membership so it also diverts certain possible cost so while we have uh, different forms of uh, you know uh, creation versus diversion there i mean welfare is not optimized so therefore certain some theories on second base principles are suggested dynamic effects of uh, customs union are also suggested you can refer benefits and uh, or cost of member as well as non member or uh, talked about and conditions are more likely to uh, to dis i mean lead to increase welfare we also discuss some of the conditions on lecture number 38 particularly we uh, discuss structure and functions of w2 especially trade negotiation trade disputes settlement structure objectives functions their scope scope related to goods especially in the gat period it was restricted to only goods but services uh, were actually taken off from wto inception in 1995 uh, and trips also included trims, uh, gats, services related. We discuss argument in favor of WTO. These are the structure, ministerial conference, which is at the apex body of WTO. <coughs> there are sub bodies, majorly dispute settlement body, general council, and trade policy review board. Under general council, goods, intellectual property, services are actually included. The details you can follow it from the WTO website. Here is the platform we have already discussed in detail in that uh, lecture. Now, till the uh, date uh, 98 percent of the total uh, trade is actually accompanied by the member countries. Still, there are some countries are in the accession process, uh, you know only 22 <coughs> and some countries are actually not at all the member. Okay, so, you can follow this also through WTO website and you can click also each of the points separately. So, on the uh, uh, lecture number 39, we unfolded the discussion of recent cases, especially one important case a dispute settlement case raised by Bangladesh on Indian you know Indian uh, film industry for a particular uh, movie murder, where a, a, a song was actually copied from uh, Bangladesh you know uh, music band called Miles. So, they raised the complaint against Anu Malik and uh, through the uh, various dispute settlement bodies by uh, highlighting the intellectual property rights case, Bangladesh won the case and then there are a number of compensation made and WTO you know, guarantees the protection of certain issues. So, therefore, this was discussed you can refer to lecture number 39 in uh, clearly. Then uh, in, uh, India's latest uh, RTAs, uh, regional trading agree agreements as part of you know uh, international integration are discussed, those are in 4, those are in accession, these are in early, early announcement and those are in group like G20, G33 nations, G7 nations, those are actually discussed in detail. Now, this is the uh, map at the last of our concluding session on how disputes are actually dealt, especially from Indian case. Now, if I cite 11 cases were raised by India on US product, whereas this was uh, the case, India is the complainant and in, 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 in blue India is solving, it is actually as a respondent to the complaints raised by different countries. Similarly, in the red uh, color, it is highlighted as India is actually complaining or raise complaint in the WTO negotiation for number of uh, violations made, whereas in the blue it is India is resolving and or India is actually the uh, respondent to the complaints raised by different committees. So, in short uh, we discuss the complaint uh, for India 24 complaints as respondent 31 and as a third party 160. So, uh, so friends what we have made uh, in, to in totality uh, in short 
we discussed uh, you know classical theory to modern the new classical based on the context their cases then we actually wrapped up with various factors various diagrams modeling measurement uh, to have better strategies and uh, we also uh, talked about the latest policies which are uh, you know used at large for strategy and protectionism by the member countries and at the last we summed off with integration how member countries tie up each other to have a better you know and a holistic strategy uh, in the present date of discussion of strategic trade and protectionism. So, therefore, these are all for discussion. I hope uh, you enjoy all the sessions on uh, different issues. And, uh, and many contexts are already given within the you know each of the uh, PPTs to answer the questions which are going to be asked in different session for your evaluation. I hope this is going to be very successful uh, and, and, and if any doubts are coming you can clarify during the each course uh, of his interaction we will have uh, separately and you can raise your questions and there are number of questions also floated in addition to each week lectures. So, with this I should stop here, thank you so much.